Hello and welcome to this second special episode of the Rock Sound Podcast celebrating all things Warp Tour as it completes its final cross-country run. Yes, it's the Legends of Warp Tour. Later on, we will be chatting with Alex Gasgarth from All Time Low, looking back at the band's many appearances on the tour as well as their guest slot on this final run earlier this summer. We'll also be chatting with Jenna McDougall from Tonight Alive about growing up in Australia and the scene there and what Warp Tour meant to them and how it helped shape their career when they finally got to play it over in the states but first very very special guest from Beartooth Mr. Caleb Chomo now Caleb is in an incredibly unique position not only has he played it with Beartooth he also played the tour with Attack Attack prior to that and ended up forming his own supergroup on the road as well with Silverstein of course those Silvertooth shows lot of fun stories about that a lot of really unique memories from him I think you're going to enjoy this one so let's kick off this Legends of Warp Tour episode of the Rock Sound Podcast with Mr. Caleb Shoma. Uh, Caleb Shoma's with me. How are you, sir? I am very good. Just hanging at home, chilling out, just got some pizza. It's a good time, you know, good yeah. time. That's a, that's a good way to spend an evening. I respect that a lot. <laughs> um, so, of course, yeah. we're talking about Warp Tour as it's the final, final run. First thing I want to get from you, did you attend much before you ever played it? What's your first actual memory of Warp Tour? Uh, I only ever attended one war tour before I played it. I attended the Cincinnati date of the 2008 war tour. And that was actually, uh, funny enough, while we were making the first Attack Attack record, because it was like right down the road. And that was actually the only one I've ever attended not playing. Enough. Wow, fair enough. Do you remember much about who was on the lineup that year? Do you remember? Who did you uh, end up going and checking out? Uh, man, I saw, uh, saw Katie Perry play to like a tiny crowd. That was pretty bizarre. Wow. Yeah, uh, was that class yeah. hero. Uh, one of my personal favorite bands of all time in Berlin. Um, they played, I mean, it was just a killer year. Yeah. It, it was really sick to go watch. Yeah. Nice stuff, man. Nice stuff. All right. Let's jump forward then. So the first year you're playing with attack attack, are the nerves there? I mean, was this kind of an ambition for you guys to get to Warp Tour? Did you did you see that as an end goal for where you guys were headed? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think for any band, you know, coming up in that scene at that time, I mean, even any band realistically just in this music scene that we kind of, you know, play in, I think Warp Tour is always a goal if you live in the United States. It's like just such a monumental tour and so many huge bands have come out of it and uh yeah i I mean it was a it was a mind-blowing thing that we got to do it like the first year that we had a record out it was you know nuts yeah absolutely and what so what are the nerves like there were you were you kind of hyped to just get on stage or did it feel like a grander show in that way uh yeah i mean i was jacked to get up on stage you know thankfully we we had a few tours under our belt so it wasn't so much nerves as it was excitement um we were all just i mean absolutely ecstatic to even be you know walking the grounds with you know the warp tour laminate on uh, i mean it was a dream come true yeah that's really cool to hear so who were the people you were kind of hanging out with that first year what bands did you make friends with 2009 god it's so long ago it's a long um, time back man yeah man yeah uh what was it breathe carolina was on that year we were like good buds with them they're like they're wild uh <laughs> they're always just some wild nights with them um fuck 2009 i, I genuinely wish i could remember the lineup but i, I don't even i don't even know uh 2010 though i will say that lineup was nuts. I think 2010 was when I want to say a day to remember and bring me the horizon were both on 2010. Maybe one was on nine months on 10. I can't remember exactly, but, uh, no, it was because I remember there was this huge stretch of warp tour where like, it seemed like every single day, uh, attack attack would be playing against bring me the horizon at the end of the day. And it was like, the worst. <laughs> I mean, it was just like, it's bring me. It's like, fuck, what are you going to do? But, um, you know, it, it was an amazing tour. And I don't know, it, you know, Warp Tour is just a huge part of my life. And it's been there since 
fuck, I don't know. I've been doing the tour now for almost 10 years. I mean, the, one of the nice things, we've been chatting to a lot of people about uh, about Warped Tour recently. One of the nice things that keeps coming up is people saying how cool it is to tour with bands that they'd never necessarily tour with in any other circumstance just because it's such a diverse lineup. Uh, were there any of those that you particularly remember that you ended up hanging out with? Um, yeah, I, I mean, countless, like, I mean, there would be random, you know, rappers on different stages that we would never get to play shows with. There would be, you know, folk band. There was this band called, uh, Larry and his flask. That was like this kind of like punk folk bluegrass thing that was really sick that, you know, we got to watch every day and kind of hang out with them. Yeah. I, I mean, you really did hit the nail on the head. That's honestly one of the coolest parts about war tour in general is that there's so many different genres, but everybody's there for the same reason. And there's just such a sense of camaraderie. It's really amazing. This is the, the most fascinating thing about yourself, of course, is that you've played with a number of different acts. I mean, that's got to put you in a very, very rare position in terms of the people that played Warped Tour. I'm curious when you first played with Beartooth then, um, did it feel like a whole new experience or did you feel like, oh, you know what? This is home for me. We're, we're ready to go. I just felt like home. Um, I mean, the first time Beartooth played it, we actually only played one day and we like happened to get on the orange ball. And that one day I just crammed in like as much, you know, warp tour as I could, like when, you know, seeing my friends on the production team and seeing all the bands playing and stuff. But, uh, no, the, every time I've played it, it's kind of just been like home, you know, as corny as that sounds like that's what Warped Tour really was. Cause I've done uh, what, you know, six out of the last nine summers that I've been alive have been doing the entirety of warp Tour. And then, you know, we've played eight out of nine in some capacity. Yeah. So like, it, it really is just like a second home and, I don't know. It's one of those things that's definitely going to be uh, definitely going to be hard to see go, you know? No, of course, man, of course. And, and when you're so familiar with it like that, do you fall into, like, do you have, like, a daily routine? Like, t- take me through your typical warp day. Do you have, like, the same staples you are hitting off every day, or is it not kind of like that? Uh, it depends on the year. You know, certain years I would just kind of, like, you know, maybe I'd be waking up really early and then every morning I'd like go get breakfast with certain people. And then we'd just kind of make the rounds watching all the bands. Uh, I mean, it does get a little bit, you know, groundhog day where like you, you know, you wake up, you go to catering, you find your set time, you find your signing time. And then you do that. Then you go to the barbecue, you know, have a few beers, go to bed, do it all the next day. But I mean, even then when it's kind of feeling like the same thing every day, it's like, the perfect day so i don't know uh, it's always awesome yeah sounds it man really really does uh we've got to of course mention silver tooth now as well so i mean talk me through those shows <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean some of your favorite oh, memories from those shit. oh my god I, I mean all of them i i mean i think my favorite silver tooth though was the final one we did it was in shakopee wisconsin i believe i don't know it was somewhere kind of like random like we always did silver tooth in more random markets we rarely did them in like the big giant shows um but this last one it was just so fucking cool there were so many of our friends and like we just made a ton of silver tooth shirts and like everybody at production and you know all our friends on the tour everybody got one and then uh, we kind of have a tradition for silver tooth shows where we would just make enough merch to like make enough money to do something ridiculous. Like we never did it to make money. We did it to just kind of blow on some like crazy experience. Like the first time we did it, we rented a giant limo and like 17 of us went down to this pizza place and we all just ate a bunch of pizza, then went to a donut shop and got like 12 dozen donuts and we just like all hung out and, you know, everybody on the tour came up and we have a donut and hang and that was fucking cool. And then this last one, uh, we went and rented like a mini yacht and like all dressed up in like goofy, like, you know, yacht boat clothes and, uh, just like kind of had this blowout afternoon and 
I don't know. It's that's to me is what Warp Tour is about. Is just it's all for the sake of fun, and yeah. it's all for just having a good time and you know really enjoying every moment. Yeah, absolutely. I've got asked though, like at what point when you're putting a show together are you going? man, I need to find a place I can rent a yacht around here. I mean, how do those those uh, wild yeah. things go? It's such a cool thing to do, but how do they come together? Is it kind of spur of the moment things like, right, let's go find something ridiculous to do, or are you planning ahead? Oh, no, it's all spur of the moment. I mean, even Supertooth was spur of the moment. Like, we were all just sitting, we call it the back porch, but basically us and Silverstein always parked our vehicles next to each other, and then out back of the trailer, we'd set up tents and there'd be like a little barbecue and, you know, two, three coolers full of beers. And we would just hang out there every night. And on, you know, one of our nights that we were all drinking and having a good time, we were just like, let's just combine bands. <laughs> like, we might as well at this point. And then, you know, next thing you know, two weeks later, we actually did and we're playing a show. And I mean, that was the same thing with the yacht day. It was like, we were like, are we going to do fucking silver tooth this year and we were like yeah let's do it and we just chose some random place and then we're like well what do we do with this money for like the final blowout and we're like fuck it let's go on like a yacht like total joke like there's no way that's possible and uh yeah we found somewhere that like did cheap you know you could rent one for a few hours and it was just dumb and fucking fun and uh, yeah i mean that man uh, those are going to still always be some of the best summers, if not the best summers of my life. I can imagine, man. I really can. Uh, I've got to ask as well, of course, even though Warp Tour is wrapping up now, will we see the rise of Silvertooth again? Oh, I fucking guarantee. But at the same time, I mean, there's reality that, you know, they have a new record, we have a new record, we're all busy, you know, so hopefully at some point we can uh, take Silvertooth worldwide. Yeah, and sure. that's the fucking dream. Yeah, when the <laughs> schedules when the schedules eventually align, it would be incredible to see. We know we'd all love to see it. All right, I've got um, a couple of questions I've been asking everybody that uh, are pretty tricky. But you know, if you had to choose, first of all, if you had to choose, what would you say is your favorite set you've ever watched by another act on Warp Tour? I want to say it was a day to remember in Chicago. I believe 2010. Uh, I just don't know if I've ever seen that many people at a Warped Tour show and that much just miss and loud singing. Uh, I mean, a day to remember always brings it, but that date specifically was just fucking unbelievable. That's cool. Such a good live act. Always have been. Uh, and last, but by oh, no yeah. means no means least, uh, again, a tough one. You're going to have to top the yacht story now, so this is very tricky. What's your funniest memory? Oh, God. <laughs> funniest uh, story funniest memory funniest story um man that's so hard to do uh, man you are you're asking the tough ones you're asking <laughs> the tough ones man it's the last couple uh, of weeks i've got to get them out before it ends this is it yeah yeah of course um man i mean some of my i don't know if i have a funniest specific story but just the barbecues in general you would see the craziest shit that you have ever seen in your life. Just, I mean, a bunch of people, like, especially if there was an off day the next day. <laughs> Excuse me. Because, I mean, Roadie Friday, you know, you can spare yourself a day and be hungover or whatever. And people just fucking cut loose. And, I mean, there's always, like, a DJ just blasting music, karaoke, I will. Okay. How about this? Uh, counterparts put on like a little, uh, like parking lot karaoke thing, a couple nights on board tour 2017. And those got so fucking out of control. I watched like, you know, the singer of counterparts sing a fucking, I believe I watched him sing a counterpart song with like a bunch of other fucking people just backstage, like in a parking lot, you know, I saw, fuck, I don't know, like people would be singing blink and then it would turn into like the Baja men and then it would all just go to hell. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, there's just some shit that I've seen that I'm, I'm not at liberty to discuss, but <laughs> goddamn, I mean, that tour, those parties were incredible. 
Yeah, oh no, I'll bet, man, I'll bet. Well, I mean, congratulations again on many amazing years on Warp Tour. Uh, you know, we'll chat soon, I'm sure, about all the new music and exciting stuff going on with Beartooth. Uh, but for now, thank you so much. Another legend of Warp Tour, Caleb Shomo. Good to chat to you, man. Hell yeah, thanks for having me. Appreciate it, dude. Such great stories from Caleb there. And if you want to hear Beartooth's brand new single and loads of new chart entries, Go and check out the Rock Sound chart over on Spotify right now. Just go on Spotify, search for Rock Sound, and hit subscribe. It gets updated with all the biggest new tunes from our scene every single Friday. Right, still to come, Mr. Alex Gasgarth will be taking us through all-time lows various years on Warp Tour. But before we get to him, it's time for our next legend of the tour. Yes, it's Jenna McDougal from Tonight Alive. They've played it multiple times. Of course, the band developed and grew up in Australia. We talk about her knowledge of Warp Tour and how that came from the Blink song like most people in the uk and australia uh, and all her experiences growing up around that scene so here now from tonight alive is jenna mcdougall jenna mcdougall's with me hello jenna hi james how are you i'm not too bad lovely to talk to you um of course you're currently out there in the states on warp tour Uh whereabouts do we find you today we're in buffalo we're at a venue um in darien lake and this is my favorite stop on Warped because it has a roller coaster park attached to the venue and it's free for us to go oh, wow. so i'm in very good spirits yeah i could imagine that's amazing what kind of rides <laughs> are we talking in there is it is it their log flumes is it just straight roller coasters what's going on yeah there's some pretty extreme roller coasters like some old rattly ones there's like a slingshot a water park it's pretty epic man awesome and we've had memories here since 2012 so it's it's pretty nostalgic yeah, um, I can imagine. Set up, yeah. Awesome, man. Well, that's an exciting day. Good day to catch you on. Awesome. Um, yes. So uh, let's go back right to the very, very beginning with Warp Tour stuff. Obviously, you weren't based in the States when you were starting out. Mm-hmm. So how did you first hear about Warp Tour and, and what it was all about? I think I probably heard about it from the rock show, Blink-182 song. Um, so I'd heard about it like that as like a young teenager, maybe like 12 or 13. And then... Um, yeah, I just remember when we started getting into punk music that that seemed to be the tour that everyone was on. And, and when YouTube came out, it was like those were the videos that we were searching. And I like specifically remember this video of Rufio. I don't know if they were – I forget the song they were playing, but it's like one of these videos that we obsessed about as a band, like when we were 15, 16, and just um, – we used to love watching band DVDs and YouTube videos of live shows. So – yeah, Warp Tour was one of those. Yeah. Um, frequently searched. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can imagine. I think we've all done that. Don't worry. Mm. Um, but also, I suppose when you guys were getting to a level where you were playing more gigs and you were getting slightly mm-hmm. known in the US, it was all kind of starting up. Was it an ambition? Like, did you have it on the list going, you know what, we need to get there and start doing Warp Tour? 100%. Yeah, totally. I remember being like 16 or 17. And we even when we started, we were like, we want to be internationally recognized and we, we want to be like credible and respected musicians. And that was like the teenage dream for us. We, we wanted to be, we wanted to be an internationally touring band. We, we knew that Australia was limited for us, like somehow, maybe intuitively, just because all our favorite bands were from overseas and it, was, it all seemed, this seemed to be the hotspot Warp Tour. So I remember being like at a house party and we, our first manager was a little bit, um, it was a bit more of like a friend set up where he had experience like booking shows and tours and things like that, but started managing us. And so it was a little bit of an unprofessional like set up, but he promised Warp Tour. And that was, I just remember being at a house party and like having that conversation and being like, oh my God, that like, it's a reality. And you know, you, you, you believe anything that um, someone you respect tells you at that age. But luckily like what we believe became a reality for us yeah it came true really really did so Mm. let's talk about that first year then 2012 like you said what are the nerves going in paint a picture for me about that first day on your first walk oh (laughs) pretty nervous I mean so young like 20 years old and um the first date was Salt Lake City so I really remember what that venue looked like and the show was pretty disastrous like we were facing like a building it wasn't we weren't in one of the nice spots that was like wide open where there was like a lot of foot traffic it was like we were just facing this brick wall and um yeah wax guitar string broke like I didn't know what I was doing um I don't think we were on in-ears yet like so 
Yeah. Eventful. I mean, really, my memories, yeah, my memories are pretty um, faint from the first year. And then I think the second year I actually had more memories, just being a little bit older and feeling like it wasn't so much of a whirlwind. Um, but, yeah, I think we were just uh, one of the youngest bands on one of the, like, most sort of preliminary type stages. It's probably not the right word, but we're on the Kevin Sense stage. So it's kind of like the Kevin's giving us a chance stage, which is really cool. Yeah, that's really, really nice to hear. And I guess one of the things we've been talking uh, with loads of people about, it is kind of a recurring theme that keeps coming back. The great thing about Warped Tour is because that lineup is so varied, you end up touring with people you would never necessarily end up touring with. So who do you kind of remember that you became friends with who just happened to be touring, like that you wouldn't necessarily have toured with? Who did you end up hanging out with on the road in those early years? Oh, it's a great question. The weird thing for Tonight Alive is that we've always been on really mixed and strange lineups. Like our second tour in the States, we toured with Motionless and White and The Word Alive and Bless the Fall and all of those bands have since, and at the time, were on Warp Tour as well. So like it, it, this year is really amazing because we know so many of the bands and like especially on the stage that we're on the left and right foot. It's a, a strange stage name, but... For people that don't know, it's called Journey's Left and Right Foot, the stages that we're on. And I think we've toured with every single band on to the two stages. Oh, so there's wow. like 25 or something bands between the two. So um, who can I tell you, though? I mean, I mean, the crazy thing is we met everyone we ever looked up to. And we've had an amazing career where we've also written songs with and done features with those bands as well. Um, this year, Simple Plans on the lineup. Um the used was out and we toured with the used a couple of times and yeah a lot of people that we look up to and that that gave us a chance on the first walk tour was like pierce the veil and then later that year they took us out on their album tour amazing so a lot of opportunities and a lot of friendships come from the festival yeah that's really really lovely to hear uh, i want to ask as well about one of the other elements because you know you're always you, you have the gig every day but there's other elements to it as well uh, i want to talk specifically about the kind of meet and greets and the merch table stuff is there anything this year or any other year any particularly memorable moments for when the fans are coming out there Every day is pretty far out. I'm trying to remember, like I, I started a diary, like good things about today. And um, I try to remember the really beautiful stories that people tell me or the lovely compliments and things like that. Because when we started out the tour, my self-esteem was kind of a little shot. And I don't really know why, but I came out here not in my full power. And um, I started this diary to try and remember all the, the beautiful moments of each day but seriously how our fans are like really emotional like compassionate gentle like self-improvement junkies like me <laughs> so um so yeah every day people come out and they're showing us tattoos that are in my handwriting or um they're just symbols that they get on their body that say like i'm i'm more powerful and i'm more like stable and happy because of my connection to your music so I, i'm kind of like boycotting your question slightly but that it, it, it's just because every day is like is so dense with those type of experiences. Yeah, that's amazing. No, that's 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 what you want. You want too many amazing experiences <laughs> to pick from. That's the dream. That's what we're all hoping oh, for. You're man. Right. Um, so as we've said already, final run. How's the vibe out there at the minute? Is it getting a bit emotional? Because we're kind of towards the end now. I, I wonder like when it's gonna kick in because like this is actually the, the most fun period of the tour for me. I think the first two weeks I was in self-preservation mode, just knowing like Last time I was out here, my health is a bit um, unstable. So, like, I'm here and I'm getting up every morning and doing yoga and I've got this whole, like, health routine supplements and, like, making sure that I'm in a good headspace every single day. So that was, like, the beginning of the tour for me. And now that we're, like, the second third of the tour, like, I'm, like, in my most social butterfly mode. And everyone's, like, playing baseball and learning skate tricks out the back of the trailers and I don't know. It's just actually, this is the most fun part, but I really think we're coming into the last two weeks and everyone's about to start going, fuck, we might never see each other again. Or, Hey, we might ever be on the same bill again. And th this experience is totally not, I don't think it's like recreatable. Yeah. I don't, if that, I don't know if that's even a word, but <laughs> oh, I know it's what far you mean. Up. Yeah. I was, I was, oh, it's funny. We were chatting with Chris mm. motionless the other day as well. And he mm -hmm. was saying that, like you've just said, all those kind of big events, the annual events, like the barbecue or playing, you know, baseball or whatever, it, it's been bigger and better and, and more kind of fun filled than ever, I guess, because everyone knows this is the last one. I mean, has it felt bigger than previous years? Oh, the, definitely the shows are. I mean, the shows are actually selling out and you have days where there's 25,000 people coming out. And that's really, really 
I mean, I know in the UK like, there's, there's there's like monstrous size festivals, but this is this is a lot of people out here, and especially to squeeze into a parking lot. Like, this isn't spread out like Reading and Leeds, and I I, I wonder what it's like to be English and to go to those festivals and imagine what Warped was like. Cause I, I think they're very, very different. Um, but, yeah, they, these days are huge. And, like, everyone is sitting at the back of their trailer under their tents, like, with lights and some some people, like, four years strong, have a little campfire, like, set up. And just everyone rides bikes around and says hi. And sweet. I don't know. It's, it's actually a really, really cool environment. Yeah, that's really, really sweet. It's nice. All right, well, we've been uh, wrapping up all of these <laughs> with three big key questions. They're very hard questions, but stay with me. We'll okay. see how you get on, all right? So the Do first one is, <laughs> I know you will. The first one <laughs> is, um, if you had to choose, what would you say is your favorite set you've ever watched at Warped Tour? Oh. Oh. That's such a cool question. Um, well, I watched Joan Jet. I mean, this is... I'm just going to say it. It doesn't necessarily have to be the truth, but in this moment it is. I watched Joan Jett last night and um, I was sitting with Jess Bowen who played for the Somerset and she's now with 303, playing, uh, sitting with Amy from The Interrupters, from Tatiana um, Di Maria, um, the singer of Dolskin, and the, the singer of um, Sharp Tooth. So like most of the female artists on the tour last night, we were all huddled together side stage watching Joan Jett and as soon as she walked out on stage I started crying and I don't even know what came over me like she's not my favorite artist or anything but her energy was like so potent and she was just so composed and so cool and I just started crying I was like this is it this is Warped Tour like so effing cool yeah that's awesome so, that was a big moment yeah. I can't wait to write my diary about it to be honest <laughs> and yeah, I'll tell my, much... tell my dad about it he'll be stoked <laughs> yeah absolutely what a legend she is that's awesome uh, okay mm-hmm. next up your funniest memory or funniest story from Warp Tour what comes to mind I really I hope this isn't repetitive for anyone listening because I've definitely told this story before but I think it was our very first Warp Tour and we were in Toronto and there was like a what do they call a cyclone warning? Because I, I don't even have that word in my vocabulary hardly because it's not a thing in Australia. It is, but not regularly. But anyway, the whole festival flooded and got evacuated and we were at a signing when it started bucketing down and we just decided our bus is too far away. We'll just stay under this tent and it was just, it was, yeah, it really was like a river. The, the whole festival turned into like a river. And anyway, the guys decided that it was a good idea to get naked and run around in the rain. And I was just a bystander and we were all just sitting there having a good time and someone um, sort of got some intoxicants out and, like, it was just really funny. We just thought there's no way the show is going on today. Like, it's lightning, it's thunder, it's raining. Um, But anyway, sure enough, it cleared up and we were the first band to be sort of build back on to play and no one was really in a state or in the mindset that we were even going to play that day again so it was a messy messy show but like so funny it just was like the epitome of being on your first warp tour and thinking like yeah get naked in the rain and <laughs> leave your leave your sober state of mind <laughs> it you, was classic you can never trust the weather never trust the weather out no. there that's it they'll keep changing all right last one and i think you may have actually already answered this one weirdly with a mm-hmm. depending where you are today but yeah your fave city to play on warp tour where's your favorite place to play well, that, it's more of a greedy thing to, to, to like playing Buffalo just for the um, for the roller coasters. But one of the other amazing venues on Warped is Cleveland. It's in a national, like a state park kind of thing, and it's just the most lush um, venue. And it's just completely green. You're not playing on concrete or gravel or dirt. It's just like lush grass and trees everywhere. And that, that's such a luxury for us because anytime you see grass, you're like, oh, my God. You are like on planet Earth. You're not just on like this parking lot, like uh, Groundhog Day type of thing. Mm. Where it's just never ending concrete and gravel. So that's a really special one. Yeah, lovely stuff, lovely stuff. Well, Jenna, it's always great to <laughs> chat to you. And, uh, you know, Thank enjoy you enjoy what's left of Warp Tour. I'm sure we'll see you in the UK soon enough as well. Thanks so much for chatting to us. I look forward to it. Cheers, James. Jenna McDougall there, and if you are enjoying all these Warped Tour themed interviews, head over to the YouTube channel right now, guys, youtube.com forward slash rock sound magazine, where we've got a whole playlist 
full of bands telling us their favorite Warped Tour memories. We've got State Champs on there, Mike Shinoda, Paris, loads and loads of bands. Go and check that out right now. YouTube.com forward slash Rock Sound Magazine. Right, time now for our final guest from All Time Low. It's Mr. Alex Gasgarth. Now, All Time Low, of course, became something of a mainstay of the tour, playing it multiple times in the last few years, but they also made sure they returned for this final run right at the beginning of the tour for a few very special guest appearances. And as you'll hear Alex say in a moment, they are among some of the favorite shows he has ever played with the band, and they even wrote Everything Is Fine sort of with Warped Tour in mind, that big, big, bouncy sound. So yeah, here he is, reflecting on all those years being a part of Warped Tour in the scene from All Time Low, Mr. Alex Gasgar. Well, he's played it five times with All Time Low. Alex Gasgarth joins me now. How are you, Alex? Hello, I'm doing well. Five times? Yeah, man. That's Well, that's what the internet's telling me. You tell me if that's wrong. You were there. Veteran status, I think. That, that warrants <laughs> veteran status. We've made it. Absolutely, man. You've made it. You really have. I want to go through each of these years. I've got so many questions because it's been such an important part of the scene, as you well know. But first of all, had you attended in your younger years? Were you, what was your first Warp Tour experience? Yeah. Uh, the first one I attended was, I think, 2004. Um, either 2003 or 2004. Uh, and it was with, um, I went with Ryan and my friend Jesse and Ryan's older brother Chase took us. Um, and that was my first Warped Tour experience. And I discovered the matches that day, which was probably one of the better revelations of my being on this earth. Um, <laughs> everyone should discover the matches. Uh, and yeah, it was, it was incredible. It was like nothing I'd ever seen before. You know, I'd been to some concerts and like festivals and things like that, but you know, there was nothing and is nothing quite like the warp Tour. Um, so it, it blew my mind, you know, that many bands. Uh, the, the element of discovery was what I loved about it. It was like, I could walk up to a random stage at a random time and, and fall in love with something then and there. And I think, uh, I did that probably 20 times that day. Um, <laughs> so it was, it was special. Nice. Who else do you remember seeing on that particular one? Then Are there any sets, sets that, uh, kind of stand out for you in those early, early days? Yeah. I mean, like I said, the matches obviously stood out. Uh, they, they really kind of won me over. Um, I remember, loving the yellow card set. I think yellow card was playing like the Ernie ball stage at the time, which oh, is wow. also crazy. Cause then I think they, they went back and headlined it and crushed it like a year later. Mm. Um, but, but yeah, uh, and story of the year, uh, for the first time. And I think they were, go- they were under the name big blue monkey still. It was before they were even officially story of the year, but they had like, they had been working with John Feldman on that first, like iconic album. Um, so yeah, it was it was insane, and they're doing like backflips and throwing their guitars and shit. It was just the coolest thing ever. Amazing man, great to hear. Right, let's jump forward a couple of years then. Two thousand and seven. That's your first Warp tour. What were you thinking? Like, how how nervous were you that first show? Take me back to that day. Uh, well, two thousand seven was it was actually the second year that we did Warp tour. We we did it in 06 as well. Um, but two thousand seven was the first time that we did it like proper uh we you know we had a tour bus we were on the whole tour uh and it was very daunting because we we were a baby band among a sea of you know veteran warp tour acts you know no effects was on that year less than jake um i want to say who else was on that year i i I don't know so many good bands and we were super intimidated yeah it was a huge lineup and we were super intimidated and basically just didn't want to like step on anybody's toes we were just there to, to, to win as many people over as we could and not get in anyone's way. Um, but we ended up making a ton of really awesome friends. Um, and like, what was really cool about it was with some of those veteran bands really took us under their wing and kind of showed us the ropes. And I think I would say that that summer was probably, you know, when we, when we really learned to, to do a tour properly. Um, I think that kind of set us up for the future. Yeah, absolutely. Summer. I mean, yeah, that is that is what everyone kind of says. It is for many people their first experience of doing that full. I mean, it's got it's like normally like six, seven weeks, isn't it? Uh, does it ever get particularly grueling, or how do you find ways to kind of power through when you're going for that long in uh, in a very intense environment? To be fair, it's super intense. But we were we were really like we were young and eager, and so we kind of ignored it. You know, we we didn't really care. Uh, we were just out there hustling <laughs> you know it was like how do we get how do we get people to pay attention to us you know nobody nobody really was that familiar with the band yet um so it was kind of like a constant struggle every day to like convince people to come and watch our show and uh you know i remember like we would take a box of cds and a poster and we would walk the line at like eight nine in the morning before anybody was let in 
and uh, basically play people our songs off. I think back then it was like the original iPod. Oh wow! <laughs> and we'd like, yeah, yeah. And we'd like, you know, be like, this is what our this is what our shit sounds like. Please come and watch us. Um, and yeah, it took a lot of convincing, but you know, we'd had we'd have people show up. So at the end of the day, it was working, and that was you know really, uh, I think a valuable lesson to us about how important the, the ground level hustle is um, to getting people you know to pay attention to your music. Yeah, absolutely, man. No, it's 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 nice that it kind of fosters that community of like and a bit of a do-it-yourself attitude in a way. I suppose that's that's kind of part of the legacy, right? A hundred percent. It was it was fueled on DIY. Like Warp Tour was a hundred percent what you made it. You know, I think it was there were it was it's easy to show up and just play the shows, but that's not entirely what the Warp Tour is about. You know, it's it's kind of about going out there and connecting with people and and creating, like you said, the community aspect of it and. uh we embraced that early on, and I think that's why the Warp Tour worked really well for us as a band. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this might seem like a, a kind of obvious question, I suppose, but of course, as you guys grew as a band and became more well known, what's quite interesting, there were several years on what where you were just playing consecutively every summer. So, how does the dynamic kind of change, apart from presumably more people turning up? Uh, how does how does it kind of change when you're doing that year to year? You must notice the differences more accurately, I would imagine. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it was, it was definitely palpable. Like, you know, I mean, for one, we went from the smaller side stages to the main stage and that, that alone was a big difference, you know, but, um, it, it just got more and more exciting and more engaging and people were, you know, it went from us convincing people to come see us to, to, you know, people lining up for a signing, uh, and that, that all happened each summer. And so we, it was like a palpable growth. Uh, that we could really like measure. And that was, uh, that was really special for us because it, it let us know that, you know, whatever we were doing was working. Yeah. And, um, you know, when you're pouring your heart into the music that you're making and, and to being on the road, that's, that's the reward. That's the payoff. You know, pe- people giving a shit is, is all you can ask for. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things we've been asking everybody as well, because Warped is such a diverse lineup, you kind of end up touring with a lot of people you would never normally end up touring with. So who were the kind of friends you made on the road that you wouldn't necessarily have ever been on the road with otherwise? Um, oh, man, all kinds of bands. I mean, like, you know, I, I think, like, to me, it was just the, the cross-genre stuff that really... Um, that I loved because the, you know, the, the warp tour was amazing in that it, it put all these different genres and, and sub genres together. And it was very unabashed about doing that. And I think that's really important in the festival world and festival culture is that it's, you know, don't just put together a bill that's 45 carbon copies of the same band. Nobody wants that. Um, so yeah, I mean like, you know, it was, it was the only times that we really got to kick it with, you know, Norma Jean and, and, uh, Seosin and, and bands like that, because, you know, off, off the Warped Tour, All Time Mode just wasn't touring with those kinds of bands because genre wise, it may not have made as much sense. Um, so yeah, it was, it was really fun to make friends with, with, you know, all the bands that we just didn't get to tour with on the reg. And, uh, I, I would say that even, um, we, we ended up going on and doing the, that co-headliner years ago with Pierce the Veil and, uh, a huge part of that coming to be was because uh we met them on the warp tour and realized like half the kids coming to our signings were wearing pierce the veil shirts and i think before that we kind of looked at it as like we're too far apart we're not the same genre this wouldn't work and that very much confirmed to us that it was like oh this totally works and uh yeah so the the it kind of inspired that whole thing yeah, it's nice to see, man. It's nice to see all these friendships kind of coming out in the scene through this this big summer tour. It's it's amazing, man. And of course, as we've said already, like you've just done the final one. You guys popped in for a few shows. Emotional experience? How was that for you? Yeah, it was to- it was very emotional. Um, you know, we we had a blast with it, and it was very bittersweet to to kind of be you know on it for such a short time and see everybody. And it was it was very much a tease. Uh, to not then go on and do the whole thing. It felt like we were supposed to be there for the rest of the summer. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really cool. Um, especially like we, every show for us was amazing that weekend, but, uh, the one in Mountain View, we closed down and it was in this amphitheater and, um, you know, was, we were the last band on and it had been a long, hot day and we were worried that, you know, people 
just weren't going to have it in them to stick around for us. But uh, by the time we went on, like that entire amphitheater was packed. There's probably 12, 14,000 people in there. And um, it was, it was just one of those moments when like everything felt like it made sense. You know, it was like, we started here. This was such a, a groundbreaking thing for us. And now here we are, you know, doing this for the last time we're ever going to do this in the context of the Warped Tour on this stage. And um, it was, yeah, it was a very bittersweet, but but very real and, and awesome moment for us. And, and Kevin came out and said a few things to the crowd. And um, the whole thing was just like, it was a perfect send off. Yeah, that was really, really lovely. It looked amazing. We've watched some of the clips online. It looked absolutely fantastic, man. Uh, other cl- big clip that came out as well when you guys were doing the little run there, uh, you guessed it with the Champs boys, which is always fun to see. Was that a spur of the moment? How, how did that kind of come about? Yeah, it was a little bit spur of the moment. I mean, um, I was just, I was super lucky to, to get to work with them on, the, on some of the songs on the new record. And uh, when I realized they were playing uh, one of the songs that we did together, um, I was like, oh, I got to I got to come out and, and do some of that. So yeah, they were, they were playing criminal and, um, uh, it, it seems to like really be connecting with, with the crowds and, um, yeah, I just asked them if I could jump out for it. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was fun. Yeah. And that's kind of, again, that's all like the spirit of work tour is that you're, you're there with your friends, you know, playing music all day. Uh, and there's, there's kind of nothing cooler than, than getting to be spontaneous and jump out and share those moments. Yeah, awesome, man. Such a nice moment. Really, really is. All right. Well, I want to finish up. There's a few kind of semi quick fire questions I'm asking everybody. All right. So this is this is for the entirety of your time playing Warped Tour all these different years. All right. First of all, I want to hear what your fave set you ever saw by somebody else was. Oh, um, My Chemical Romance in 2005. I, we weren't playing. I just attended. <clears throat> and uh, it was so insane. It was, you know, they were in the process of blowing up and becoming massive and you could just kind of feel it in the crowd. Like the, the energy when they went on the stage was just like, Oh, okay. This is, this is something, this is something real. Yeah. Nice man. Great choice. All right. Next up your funniest memory of your time on the warp tour. Uh, probably the, the, there was a dance contest, uh, one of the years and, um, Somehow I ended up managing to come in second place and I lost to a professional dancer. So really I, I chalk it up as it's first place in my mind. Um, cause obviously a pro is going to win, but, uh, yeah, number one, number one amateur dancer on the world tour. Very nice. That sounds slightly rigged to me. If there's a professional dancer in the competition, it was not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember what song you were dancing to? Come on. Oh man. Uh, I think it was eighties. It was an eighties themed party. So oh, probably don't you want me, baby, but I, I'm not sure. <laughs> nice, nice. Good choices. I like that a lot. All right, finally, if you had to pick, what was your favorite city to play on Warp Tour? Uh, I guess probably Maryland um, for us, just because it was, you know, that was the one I, I grew up going to. Uh, and so, yeah, getting, getting to kind of, you know, rip a gig in your hometown is always special. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with with Maryland, but then with an asterisk next to it. And then, you know, honestly, like that mountain view show that we did last week or two weeks ago at this point, um, was probably one of my favorite shows we've ever played. It was super special. Wow, man. That's really nice to hear. Well, congratulations on completing another run on warp tour, man. And a uh, really good chatting to you and looking back, Alex Gaskoff, everybody. Hey, thank you. There you have it. Yes, as Warp Tour wraps up its final cross-country run this week, that was Alex Gaskarth, Jenna McDougall, and Caleb Shomo reflecting on all their favorite memories there. Remember, you can go back and listen to previous week's episode as well, featuring Ben Barlow, Chris Motionless, and Mike Shinoda talking through all of their Warp Tour memories as well. And we've got loads more stuff over on the website, rocksound.tv, and on the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash rocksound magazine, looking back and celebrating all these amazing, amazing years of Warp Tour. That's about it for this special episode, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Do go and subscribe over on SoundCloud, over on iTunes, over on Spotify, or wherever you like to get your podcasts. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode and a brand new set of guests. So until then, we will see you soon.